Hello everybody. Welcome to the overview of the Goldman Fristo Test of Articulation, third edition in Spanish. Uh, just to let you know that the Goldman Fristo, the GFTA3 Spanish, is already available. And this presentation will provide you with a brief overview about the features of the test and psychometric properties. As uh, Sherry was saying, um, I am the research director for the GFTA3 Spanish test. I am a bilingual SLP with over 23 years of experience in multicultural and multilingual issues. I am also the direct, uh, research director for the new Cell 5 Spanish, and I am employed by Pearson. So there is the agenda. I will be talking a little bit about uh, giving you an overview of the GFTA3. Um, then after that, I'll proceed to talk a little bit about the Spanish administration and scoring overview. We will also talk about uh, interpretation and some technical information, and we will have about 10 minutes towards the end to do a question and answer session. So by the end of the presentation, you'll be able to list two ways that the GSTA 3 Spanish was developed to specifically address the developmental patterns of Spanish-speaking individuals Discuss one example of a case when dialect sensitive scoring would be appropriate. List, a, list, list at least two factors to consider when evaluating an examinee's error patterns of the GS, on the GS, GFJ3 Spanish. Here's an overview of the GFTA3 Spanish components. GFTA3 Spanish includes a record form or protocolo, stimulus menu or manual de stimulus, and the man, uh, menu or manual. So our components are named in Spanish. GFTA3 Spanish is a research-based comprehensive articulation assessment that is brief and easy to administer. For most individuals, it takes 15 minutes to administer the Sonidos en Palabras, and the Sonidos en Oraciones test. GFTA3 Spanish offers multiple opportunities to produce 17 consonants and 11 R and L clusters in the pre-vocalic, intervocalic, and post-vocalic position of syllables. The production of each consonant is accounted in the final score. There are two sets of picture stimuli within the Manual de Stimulus, a set of cartoon-style pictures for younger individuals ages 2 to 6 11, and a set of realistic-style pictures for older individuals ages 7 to 21 11. GSTA 3 Spanish provides norms reference, norm reference scores for an individual speech sound abilities in the area of articulation at the word level. GFTA3 Spanish also offers normed reference scores at the connected level for ages four and older. It provides information about the emergence and mastery of speech sounds. Responses to GFTA3 Spanish test items may contain regional and cultural patterns or variations that reflect dialectal differences in Spanish. GFTA3 Spanish allows you to accept Spanish dialectal or regional variations as correct responses. With GFTA3 Spanish, you can also rate the intelligibility of connected speech. The Sonidos en Oraciones test measures and compares an individual's intelligibility to the intelligibility of other individuals of the same age and sex. Both tests are available in print and digital formats. GFTA3 Spanish has unique art, but also shares art with GFTA3 English. So to the left, you will see art that is in words that are specifically designed for Spanish, 
And then there's some art shared by the, uh, with the uh, English too. So they're different words. Obviously, it's a different language, but the pictures are uh, shared. This is one example of the two sets of art that will be presented to examinees who are ages 2 through 611, and art that will be presented to examinees ages 7 and up. GSTA 3 Spanish can be used to assess older individuals whose speech is characterized by fair or poor, poor intelligibility. While it was important to maintain a fun, engaging look for very young children taking the test, it was determined that older students would be more engaged using age-appropriate test stimuli. So here is an example of uh, art of showing the art looks with objects. The one before it was with people, and this one is with objects. Here are an example showing multiple contexts context in which a phoneme is tested. So um, for the prevocalic M, we have the word mesa, manzana, durmiendo. So you see the complexity level of the word increases, so more syllables. And examples of words testing in a postvocalic S will be nariz, llaves, and tijera. So now let's uh, go and talk a little bit about the administration and scoring overview. Who can administer this test? So a bilingual speech and language pathologist has to have native or near native proficiency in Spanish. This person also should be trained and experienced in administering and interpreting articulation tests. Knowledgeable of speech sound disorders in the Spanish speaking population. Knowledgeable of Spanish phonological development and transcription using the International Phonetic Alphabet or IPA. Knowledgeable of pronunciation differences among speakers of Spanish dialects. An SLP without native or near native proficiency in Spanish may be able to collaborate with a bilingual professional. And this could be a bilingual speech and language pathology assistant, or SLPA, a school psychologist, occupational or physical therapist, diagnostician, or teacher. In order for the SLP to collaborate with a bilingual professional, he or she must be familiar with, again, the same things as before, you need to be familiar with the speech and sound disorders in the Spanish-speaking population, must know about the Spanish phonological development, must know the transcription of the individual's produ production of target words using the National Phonetic Alphabet, or IPA, must be knowledgeable in dialectal differences and also cultural considerations. SLPs must also have training or experience in testing individuals from various linguistic and cultural backgrounds. If you don't meet these qualifications, defer testing to a bilingual SLP with native or near native proficiency in Spanish. The bilingual professional is trained on test administration and administer the question prompts and suggested cues. The bilingual professional neither transcribes nor scores or interprets GSTA 3 Spanish. For resources for working with bilingual professionals, see asha.org. So when you're working or with when the um, uh, SLP is working with a bilingual professional, additional preparation time and training between you and the bilingual professional is required. So what do you do? So before testing, meet with a bilingual professional to plan the content and format of the assessment session. So this is just a meeting to let the bilingual professional know about what is the test about, what it measures, what are you looking for, and uh, prepares uh, uh, the examiner to administer the question prompts and suggested cues. During testing, the bilingual professional delivers the test stimuli and engage with the individual 
while the the uh, the SLP transcribes the individual production of the target words. This SLP should be present during testing to transcribe the responses, answer the bilingual professional's questions, observe the individual's behavior, and intervene when necessary. After testing, you and the bilingual professional should, should discuss what occurred during the assessment session. Review the individual's responses with the bilingual professional. Lastly, with the help of the bilingual professional, present the results to the individual. If he or she is an adult or individual's primary or the individual's primary caregivers. So you can, in summary, this bilingual professional can um, be helpful uh, throughout until, you know, after you have your meeting with the parents or the individual you're testing. The sonidos en palabras, which is the sound, sounds in words test, includes 50 target words that were selected carefully to minimize lexical variations. For example, in standardization, the word carro or car was included but deleted for final publication because this word elicited many lexical variations like carro, coche, auto, automobile. Words that were specific to one particular geographical region or dialect were not included in the test. The sonidos en palabras test, or sounds in sentences, includes two sets of simile. As I mentioned before, there's one for the younger individuals. We also call it re, uh, cartoon art, or another set of older individuals referred, referred as realistic art. It is recommended that the cartoon art is administered to children ages 2 to 6 to 11, and the realistic art is administered to individuals ages 7 to 21, 11. However, you can see the art style, however, you can use the art style that the individual is more comfortable. For example, you have an older student, maybe a 20-year-old, with cognitive deficit may prefer the cartoon art style rather than the realistic art style. You can do that uh, vice versa too. Um, you can have a six-year-old who prefers the older art style and you can also use it. GSTA 3 Spanish measures 17 consonants, including three allophones, which are for D, G, and B, I'm just saying the alphabet letters, and 11 R and L clusters. All consonants in the word are measured. Vowels are not accounted for in the total score. So you only count consonants, and all of them. Each target word is elicited using a question prompt. The majority of them are like, ¿Qué es esto? or what is this? If the individual doesn't produce the target word after two question prompts, you can use the suggested cue to elicit the target word. Completing the phonetic error analysis table provides a way to easily see the error patterns by phoneme and syllable position. After you complete the sonidos and palabras test, you can obtain norm reference scores, standard scores, percentile ranks, H equivalents, and growth scale values. So if you're familiar with the GFTA3 English, there's no need to learn new test administration process. You present the words and the individual names the picture. If the individual doesn't label a picture spontaneously, the test provides a suggested cue, or you can provide a different cue that follows the format provided. So what's the format we provide? We state the word. For example, if the word is perro, you say, esto es un perro. Ladra. ¿Qué es esto? And then the child has to um, say the word perro. So state the 